this is the last installment I'm going to do on this uh, video series because as you can see it's all been filled in they haven't graveled down here but they filled in uh, a layer of clay and sand here that has no uh, artifacts in it the only time I can find artifacts now is when it rains a lot and there's little washes little gullies that form down through the material and sometimes it'll wash out a point or sometimes I may find one around the perimeter of the area over there in the grassy areas but that's about the only time I find anything anymore but the question still remains why did so many Native American cultures all pick this same spot for their temporary hunting camps now the river is that way it's less than a half a mile over there and these mountains all form sort of a funnel you can see right there there's another big range coming down this way and they all stop right there and that's west you can see the sun setting over there so what I think is this mountains form sort of, sort of like a funnel effect and this may have been the last place they stopped before they headed on west or maybe they were in that mountain range hunting and this is the first place they stopped the first open area on the way back to the river either way a lot of different cultures have all picked the same spot which is now a ball field now this creek flows straight to the river see it goes that way and you can see how far away it is from the camp area but this is the only, this is the place where I found artifacts but I was told that over there where the water park is now that there was artifacts found over there as well so this whole area may have been used as a campground It makes sense that the Native Americans followed this water from the river to here and they might have kept on following it all the way to its source. So there may be another campground farther up the mountains but if there is I don't know where it's at. As you can see there's been a lot of road construction and there's been new roads put in that way so it could be that if there is a campground up through there that it's already been destroyed. Whether they use this place on their way to the mountains or use this as a temporary hunting camp on their way back, one thing is for sure that nobody stayed here for long because even though I found a lot of points I found very few of the same style. Maybe two or three of the same style at most but mostly I found lots of different points from different times in the same area so that tells me that a lot of different cultures all stayed in the same spot over a long period of time I've never found any food preparation artifacts except maybe the nutting stones because nobody knows exactly what they were used for mostly what I found here has been pieces of chert and, and lots of pieces of agate and all of this stuff had to be carried to this spot because there's none close by I found no pottery 
except maybe one piece that could have been pottery. I found no beads, and no kind of food preparation items, except maybe those nut and stones. Nobody knows what they're used for exactly. Mostly what I did find was broken points and lots of different styles and different kinds. I uh, found some hatchet scrapers. This, this right here is part of a drill that I, I never did find the rest of it. Uh, I did find some bits of drills. Like here's the bit from one, but it doesn't match. Uh, you can see I found a lot of different point styles. Uh, I was hoping to pull a big knife blade, or what most people around here would call a spearhead, out of that place, but I never found a whole one. It was about the closest I came to. Uh, can't really tell what it would have been. Looks like a square stem or maybe an Adena or something. Uh, that one there broke half in two. Uh, this would have been a nice decatur, but it's broke also. Uh, I did find two of what could be flaked celts, but they were both broken as well, and they don't match, so it's two different ones. Uh, so that's the only kind of woodworking tools I found there. I found this that looks like a paleo base. So it looks like they were using that spot all the way back at least to the paleo transitional period. Like that may have been base to a Dalton or something. Uh, found some nice exotic charts. This pink stuff. Uh, a lot of this is hornstone, like this one is hornstone, that's from here in Kentucky. And this, this hornstone as well. Uh, I found this. Looks like a, a kirk, barefricated kirk. Um, there. Might have been a harden. Or as Kirk stemmed. Um, found mostly what I found was tips and bases, but nothing I could really put together. But I mean, I found from large stuff all the way down to little bird points. So every every different culture that moved through, even though they used different tools, they all picked that same spot. Here's some more of that exotic pink stuff. Here's some white uh, quartz. There's some Fort Payne. That's got to be out from western Kentucky is the closest place I know where this is. Or maybe down in Tennessee. There's some more uh, looks like Fort Payne. It's got the spots in it. There's another drill tip. And this piece of agate. Now there is some of this close by. It's about 30 miles from here. Uh, north of here, up above Corbin. There might be some of that. There's supposed to be some geodes up there in a creek. But... Uh, at least none in this proximity. This I thought might have been a piece of a stone bowl because it's curved, but it's sandstone. I don't really know. But there used to be some nice blades there at one time, or at least there was some carried in there. I found some great big pieces. Not to find any whole ones. looks kind of like the base of a quad here's some of the flakes I picked up you can see there's a lot of different kinds of materials in there too there's a big piece of agate I found 
So they had to carry all this stuff in here because there's none close by. I kept all these pieces because I kept hoping I was going to find something that would fit together. You know, like a jigsaw puzzle, but so far, no luck. But man, that's a lot of, of uh, tool tools that were repaired or replaced in that same spot. Okay, here are some of the points I found at that uh, multi-component site. Uh, I've got some of them mounted in the frame. I just wanted to show that there's a lot of different point styles covering a lot of different time periods. And there's also a lot of materials. I would consider them probably exotic materials uh, carried from up north, you know, uh, maybe Richmond, maybe Boyle County. Uh, these are probably the prettiest ones that look like a heat treated shirt. Real pretty. Probably those three are the same style. This is probably the best one with the best tip I found. Looks kind of like a Gary point. Also found a little Kanawa point. I uh, found some hatted scrapers. Found this big table rock. It's made from a red type of chert. That's the only point I found like that. Found a couple of these. That's probably an exotic type of chert. Came from a different area. That's the only two points I found made with this hard quartzy type flint. Found a couple that look like they're big sandies. The flat bases and the side notches. Found some corner notch points. These look like they're hornstone because they're gray. Got another little point here that's hornstone. Um, found this. It's probably hornstone as well. Paddle drill. Found this motley. Some kind of brown or tan colored shirt. Found this one. It, I don't know. It might be a Snyder's has been resharpened. Looks like it's Fort Payne shirt. Found this. Milky Quartz. Looks like a, a bladelet. Found a lot of pieces of agate there. Uh, found some pieces of milky quartz. Uh, it's probably the biggest one I found. Looks like a Stanfield blade. It looks like the same kind of quartz as these. Same kind of flint, rather. So it could have came from the same area. Uh, this is the only one I can definitely date. It's a Snyder. Looks very similar to that kind of chert. Very tough type of chert. Probably from the same area. So, all in all, just a lot of different materials, uh, a lot of different styles, uh, covering a lot of different time frames at the same place. That's probably a little Gary point or something. Uh, also found a graver. Now those were used mostly in the Paleo times. So that had to be a very old component site. And then you find these. That tells you that it was used probably in the woodland of Mississippian times. 
uh, found some of these bases. Looks like it's a base to a quad point. Pretty thick style point, like maybe a a quad. Found this one. Not sure what it is. Looks kind of like a Dalton. So, uh, a lot of different uh, people use that same spot for a temporary campsite. Now, I didn't find this stuff, but this is some of the stuff I've been collecting. I purchased a lot of this stuff locally. Uh, these are probably some of my most recent purchases. These paint pots. Uh, I traded for this a while back. I believe it's a, a cone. I uh, have a lot of different uh, blades knives some great big scrapers some big old thumb scrapers look like they would have to be paleo they're so big I mean you wouldn't use something that usually the ones they use for deer were a lot smaller than that that's probably my largest one that is a big scraper Yeah, the later ones that they used in archaic times, they were smaller, about like this. So, uh, here's a cell that I traded for with this cone. Hardstone cell. Got a couple of Adenas here. So all in all, I'm getting a pretty good collection. Also got a couple of paleo bases that that came in these too. Probably another quad there. It'd be nice if I had the rest of it. Now when you look at this one, it looks like it's broke, but if you look at it from the side, you can see that it's been flaked on the end. They used it as a scraper. Here's probably the neatest one of my paint pots. This one's actually pottery. Looks like it had something on that side. I don't know exactly what it is. There's also a nice frame of uh, blades that I got with all that rest of that stuff. Got a nice uh, Kirk Corner notch there. And that one on the lower right, I, best I can tell, that, that is a snapped base dovetail. It's got a little bit of damage on the tip, but they do exist because I've seen one on eBay with a COA with it. So apparently they do exist. That one in the middle there, in the middle row, that's a lost lake. It's got some damage on it too. Um, all in all though, pretty good frame of points. There's what my wife just bought for me. A Cherokee style pipe, stone pipe, with a John Roster certificate with it. Um, got that from eBay stone cell and big axe I'm sorry but I'm going to have to rant for a few minutes um, here's my problem with most people that collect artifacts most people around here that collect artifacts can't tell you the difference between a pine tree and a hardened. 
they don't know anything about the differences between the tools. They don't know anything about the people that made them. I mean, this was what those people used for life. That's how they made their living. Uh, that's how they got their food. Uh, I mean, if you're going to collect artifacts, that's fine, but don't just collect them just because they're rocks that are worth a bunch of money. Uh, try to learn something. Find out as much as you can about them. And make the hobby a lot more enjoyable. Thank you.